Hi, I'm Leslie Ann Scorgi. Today, cybersecurity breaches cost the global economy over $3 trillion. I have with me Samantha Brooks of Mortgages of Canada and Daniel Tobak of Cytelligence as guests, and they're going to talk to us about cybersecurity. Samantha, you had a fairly recent experience where your personal information was breached. Can you tell us about what happened? Yeah, it was someone that I actually knew that was able to compromise my banking information. Um, they had actually asked me to, to actually cash a check for them because their bank had closed and they needed the money So and they had to pay an employee. So I, I said, okay, no problem, thinking nothing, nothing to it. And I vaguely remember this individual looking over my shoulder while I was entering my PIN number. Well, after that, I got a phone call, I think it was maybe three weeks later, from the bank saying that um, I had missed a car payment. And wow. yeah, I was, I was in shock. I'm like, I missed a car payment, there's no way. I, I have more than enough money in my account. And um, when I looked, I noticed that my account was in overdraft. And this person had made off with all this money. How much money did they drain from your bank account in that short three-week period of time? In my bank account was over $10,000, so they were depositing checks and then withdrawing um, checks before they actually cleared, but I don't check my bank account that often. Okay. And they were able to make off with a lot of money at that time. Now, you had mentioned $10,000 from the bank account, but sometimes cybersecurity breaches extend well beyond what's in the bank account. Did this trickle over into any other kinds of fraud? It sure did. So basically what had happened was they were, um, there was complete identity theft on me. They actually went out and, and purchased furniture and went to like Best Buy and they just bought everything, put everything on these credit cards that they were able to obtain from different retailers and I was at a loss. I was at a loss at six to $8,000. Wow, who paid for that, <laughs> by the way? <laughs> That's well, a lot of money. In the end, I, I, you know, at first I was in complete depression because I didn't know what to do. I, I had no money left. I didn't, you know, when somebody takes your entire life savings, it's kind of like, what is going on here? I mean, they were able to actually get all of my money and then go into overdraft. So there really was nothing left. Um, but at the end of the day, I had to pay for it. I had to pay for it through a consumer proposal. Wow, and what is a consumer proposal? So consumer proposal is, um, it's, it's the step that you would take before bankruptcy. Okay. So it's not quite a bankruptcy, it's just a consumer proposal where the bankruptcy trustee will actually go to the creditors and negotiate uh, the balances down and then you would have to pay that back over a three to five year period. But ultimately, you had to pay for such a horrible crime. I did, I did have to pay for it. Now, the good news was that the, the consumer proposal um, worked in my favor slightly, only because we had a police report. Okay. Yes, the individual had gone out and, um, and had a driver's license with my name. Oh my goodness. And my address, everything except for the face was somebody different and the police had that on file okay. um, when they were investigating this person. So they knew who I, wa who I was, but they, um, yeah, they, they used that and they, they were able to get off with a lot of money. This is a terrible, <laughs> terrible story. And I know that your story is one of many thousands these days. Daniel, you have been in the business of cybersecurity analysis and uh, providing a lot of advice for companies and consumers for years. What is happening to consumers and how often are there cybersecurity breaches? Absolutely, again, and horrible to hear what, what happened to you, Samantha. The unfortunate part, it's, it's on a very sharp uh, uprise in what's happening there in terms of fraud. Uh, identity theft and cyber breaches are really the common ways today criminals are getting access to your information to perpetrate crime. In the old days, somebody would break in and grab um, basically a file cabinet full of files. Uh, you gotta put a mask on so the camera doesn't see you, wear maybe some kind of a cape, and you're off to creating some fake documents in your basement. You don't have to do that anymore. You can sit in your pajamas and you can hack somebody's computer or infrastructure, steal that data, and do it in the comfort of your own home. Wow, and it seems to be 
even more sophisticated at the business level when you're dealing business to business or business to consumer. Tell us a little bit about how complex those cybersecurity breaches are. Sure. Um, also, one of the biggest trends today is we're not seeing you know kids in a basement perpetrating crimes. It's now all organized crime. So they're very well funded, they're well organized, and they have the money to invest to actually perpetrate their FUD. Businesses everywhere are getting hit. They're getting very sophisticated. You can receive an email with a smiling little cat that looks like from your next door neighbor or next core worker, and you're gonna open it and you just infected your computer and the bad guys are in. They're using malicious uh, attacks from the outside, from different countries, that basically here in Canada we have no jurisdiction, uh, so we can't even find them and prosecute them. Uh, it's becoming a little wild out there. And the data breach with Equifax happened very recently, and we know it is incredibly severe. Tell us about the impact of the Equifax data breach for Canadians. For sure, Equifax uh, sustained a, a breach that uh, lost 143 million records uh, in North America. Uh, roughly about a, a couple of million Canadians were affected by that. It's extremely significant today because the amount of data, the type of data that was taken is critical to perpetrate fraud. So when you, if you're an Equifax client, for credit monitoring, uh, uh, Equifax had, had your information on your name, your address, driver license, uh, uh, credit card history, uh, sometimes social security information on your file. If you're not an Equifax client, they could have still had your information by any transactions that you've conducted before. If you applied for a loan, if you applied for a mortgage, you applied for anything else, your name is in a record. So the bad guys are using this information to actually create your identity. Of course, they're going to change your picture, or they're going to might use some, you know, extreme uh, Adobe Photoshop or some good uh, some good makeup. But they can basically mimic you today and create documents under your name. It's so significant. It makes me wonder what Samantha, myself, what we can be asking of the businesses that we deal with when we hand over our personal information how do we ensure that it's protected? So there's things that you can do as a consumer uh, and that is uh, be extremely diligent in where you provide your information. Uh, also be cautious when you're signing up for all those free services that you're getting, a free card here, a free card there, a free service here, free Wi-Fi. I mean on average it takes seven minutes to hack somebody's phone on a free Wi-Fi system. In a lot of cases some of those Wi-Fi systems are being set up by bad guys uh, using various devices like a pineapple. That's an industry name for a device that mimics uh, a, a Wi-Fi tower, basically. So you gotta be careful the free Wi-Fi that you like to use in airports and so on. Make sure you have passwords. Um, what you can do to protect yourself is also to monitor your credit on, on your own. Right. Of course, there are the other services out there, uh, again, Equifax and other companies that monitor your credit for anything abnormal or, or phishing, no pun intended. Uh, you can also look at your credit card statements every single month, and either online, paper, whichever way you get them, but be diligent about the transactions that are occurring. And even if something is suspicious, and even if it's a small amount, still make the time to contact and ask questions about it or highlight it to the credit card company. As consumers, we should be advocating to a lot of the companies that are holding our personal information on how they're actually safeguarding our data. What are they doing? We should be demanding to see reports, to see what protocols they're following, that when they collect our data, what are they actually doing with it? It is their responsibility if they're actually holding our data. That is such great advice and in fact we're starting to see these kinds of questions asked at the, the highest levels of, of um, federal politics at the moment. Samantha, you obviously have made some changes to the way in which you um, provide information, protect your information. What are some, some kind of rules that you follow today? Right, so whenever I'm purchasing something online, I never save my credit card information on their system, on the retailer's system at all. It's just, it, it just, it scares me because I don't know how well their security systems are built on the back end, so it's just, I feel more safe just knowing that it's not saved on their server or somewhere in cyberspace. And after your experience, uh, it certainly is enough for many people to run away from any kind of financial career, but I understand it actually inspired your career today. Tell us 
what inspired you to get into the mortgage business. Right, so I mean, I did not know all that credit could do for us. At that time, I was, I was younger, I, I had no idea that credit was so important and that you could buy a home, you could, that's how you buy your car, it was really credit that was what's controlling your entire financial future um, when it comes to purchasing big ticket items. And so after realizing that, I started to get really interested in mortgages. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I just need to help my mom or a family member get their credit up and then we could buy a house. And sure enough, I, we ended up doing that shortly thereafter. That's, that's such <laughs> a, a great ending to a difficult story. Thank you so much for the conversation today, Samantha and Daniel. The world is certainly changing and the way we give our information and protect it is becoming increasingly more important. We've collected a variety of tips on how you can stay safe online. Check out lesliescorgi.com.